and I just remember thinking, I'm about to beat this bitch up. What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, I have a spicy one for you guys today. I'm going to be sharing a story time of my first ever jailhouse fight which is crazy. And please bear in mind that at this time in my life, I was 18 years old, not mentally stable, and just a very different person. This video is not glorifying violence. This video is for entertainment. Moving on. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a person in long-term recovery who has served time in prison, and my entire crazy life story is in the description box down below. If you wanna follow me on any other social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, that's Two dollars. It's only ever gonna be two dollars. All of that is linked down below, as well as my vlog channel. Please go subscribe to that. It really freaking helps. And my podcast. I'm also a proud partner with Groups Recover Together. They are a both online and in-person treatment program. They strongly lean on harm reduction. They're 420 friendly, and they're just an amazing team of people that help you from start to finish in your recovery. Whether that is getting your driver's license back, or maybe you need a place to live or clothes, whatever the problem is, Groups is going to try their absolute best to help you from start to finish. All right, let's kick this thing off. If you've been here for a really long time, you know that this is a refilm. Now, why is it a refilm? Well, I filmed it like three years ago and I left out really key details, so we could just breeze past that, right? So now for some context here, at this time in my life, I was working as a CNA at a nursing home, which was a very hard time in my life. It was the same time that I was married to my emotionally abusive ex, we call him Steve, and I was young and I was just in a really bad place. The reason why I'm mentioning working at the nursing home is because one of my coworkers that I worked with, he worked the night shift, and he would be mandated with me sometimes. Mandated in that industry means that you have worked your regular eight hour shift, but you're required to work four extra hours. So at this particular nursing home in upstate New York, I would get mandated for an extra four hours, and sometimes I would get mandated for an additional four hours. Yes, you did that math right in your head. So I would be working 16 hour shifts. I did this a few times a month, which was so hard, but it paid well and I was really trying not to be a dealer at that time in my life for a brief moment, you know, like a window, like a crack of a window in time. So I got mandated to work with this guy who was also a corrections officer. That detail matters for the middle of the story. So I violated my terms and conditions of parole and got sent to jail. Now, it was in this jail that I was serving time with a bunch of my friends and now please bear in mind here, again, I'm gonna reiterate the fact that I was 18 years old and to me getting locked up was kind of like a badge of honor at the time because I'm young and dumb and naive, but I had a lot to prove and I've always been underestimated by my size and people have always thought that they could get over on me or take advantage of me or beat me in a fight or talk crazy to me because I'm small, but I am scrappy. That's not a flex, it's a fact. So I was doing time with a bunch of my friends and this girl comes in who I knew from high school and she was telling everyone that she's from the Bronx, which is a very common thing in upstate New York. People say they're from the city when they're not from the city. And I was like, what is she talking about? I've known her since like the fourth grade. She's not from the Bronx, she's from here. She's from the same Ewok village that we're all from. Nowhere. She's not from the Bronx, that's so weird. Why is she saying that? As we started talking a little bit more about this person, it came out that she was a snitch and that she snitched on somebody's boyfriend that was serving time at this same jail. Because people knew that she was a snitch and she snitched on someone's boyfriend that is serving time in the same dorm that we're in, things were pretty tense. For the sake of this story, we will call the snitch Barbara. So Barbara was self-isolating and the way that this jail worked was you could come and go out of your cell kind of whenever you want wanted to unless it was count time or lights out. So we had individual cells in this jail, which I thought was super awesome. And not that jail's awesome, you know what I'm saying. I didn't have a roommate or a celly or a bunkie and that made me happy. It also made me happy that we could come and go in our cells at any time. So we were let out in the morning for breakfast. We stayed out until count time at 11. And then we were only in our cells for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or however long it took for them to do count. Then we'd come back out until 10 p.m. And then we'd go to our cells. But also you could go in and out of your cell whenever you wanted to. All you had to do was say, pop 16. That was my cell. And the CO is going to open the 
the door of your cell. There is a CO desk in this little pod and the CO is in there all the time. And COs have to do rounds in this jail where they have to take their ID card and hit these little tabs all across the unit to make sure that the guard is doing their, their watches or their, their cell checks. All of that was important, I felt like. I don't know, I just want you to understand how this jail works. There's always a CO with us in the pod. Now that was very different from other states across the country where like a lot of times the women are completely alone in their pods or they're locked in their cell and they're kept in their cell, like they're kept 23 and one, which absolutely sucks. I need water. But this jail that we're talking about today is nothing like that. It was essentially at the time that I was there, it was essentially easy time. We could come and go as we pleased. Um, since that jail has overgone so many changes and it's not exactly easy time anymore. I digress. So do you remember in the beginning of the video where I said that I worked with a corrections officer that was also a CNA that I got mandated with? He was the officer on duty. Now this officer on duty had seen me come into the jail and he's like, Oh my God, Jess, what are you doing here? And I had to tell him like, look, bruh, I, you know, I'm on paper, I'm an addict, this is what it is. And it was kind of one of those things where we didn't talk often because I didn't want the other inmates to think that I was a jailhouse snitch or like helping the COs or whatever. So I really wouldn't talk to him much. Barbara continued to self-isolate, which was very strange to everyone else because we would just kind of come and go as we please, right? So she was staying in her room, she'd come out, eat, and then lock herself back in her cell because she was a snitch and she snitched on someone's boyfriend. So that was causing a lot of drama. And what she would do is she would kind of taunt us, like she knew that we couldn't get to her essentially because the CO was always in the dorm and she would lock herself in the cell and we couldn't get to her. She would come out for, for chow time and some officers would let her eat her food in the cell because she was a snitch and she felt more comfortable in the cell. Sometimes, depending on who the guard was, she would go get her tray and sit down and talk crap to us while we're eating our chow, while we're eating breakfast, lunch, or dinner. She'd say little sideways comments or get a little attitude and that would infuriate the other girls for obvious reasons or she would eat her food, put the tray back and go up to her cell, and her cell was 21. She'd go up to her cell and on the upstairs tier while we are all downstairs, she'd talk shit or say something sideways and then she'd lock herself in, in her cell. One day, the girl's boyfriend that had been snitched on by Barbara gets sentenced to prison. And this girl is upset and we're talking about it and everyone's like, how are we gonna get to her? Because they want to fight her. And I kind of had a plan. As soon as I heard his sentence of prison, which was such crap, it was a drug sentence, it was a drug deal, and Barbara had snitched on him over a drug deal. Just to kind of explain where my mindset is, at 18 years old, you snitch, I'm gonna fuck you up. You snitch, you are the worst of the worst. You do your own time. I've served time on charges that were not mine. To me, snitching is one of the worst things you can do. Now let me just pause the story here to define snitching. If you're a citizen, if you are an everyday average citizen and say someone breaks into your house, call the cops. If you were on the street selling dope, running and gunning and breaking the law and you get arrested and to get out of trouble, you snitch on other people that are also breaking the law, that is snitching. Average citizens, call the cops if you're in trouble or if you need them. That's not what snitching is. If you're the victim of a crime, call the cops. If you're running and gunning and you're in that world and you're selling dope, you're, you're doing all that stuff, right? And just to get out of trouble, you tell on someone, that's what snitching means, okay? Just wanted to clarify. So I had heard the prison sentence that he got and Barbara, of course, was locking herself in her, in her cell and I was pissed. I was angry for this person that was my jail friend. I didn't know her from the street, but we were friends in jail and I was mad for her and she was upset, you know? She wasn't going to see her boyfriend for a long, a long time and she was only serving time on like a probation violation and she was, she was gonna get out fairly soon. But she's not gonna see her boyfriend for like five years and she is like really upset and distraught over this as anyone would be, right? My friend, Bob, I don't know. We'll call him Bob, who was the CNA that is a corrections officer. He was on duty that day. I go up to the CO desk and I say, I need you to pop 21. And he said, Jess, you're in 16. And he looks up and it hits him like, oh, Barbara's in 21. 
And he's like, don't do that. I'm like, you have a choice. You can either pop 21, I can go in there, whoop her ass, and close the door and you won't have paperwork, or I'll wait till she comes out for chow and smash her in the face with a tray. 32 year old me would never, okay? But I was very impulsive and I just filmed a video about my new mental health diagnosis, which is ADHD, and now it makes sense. Like, I was so impulsive, sticking up for other people and getting in fights and acting like in an instant on things, not thinking through the consequences, not thinking through the dangers that could happen, just acting in an instant. I, I was very impulsive and very reckless, and now with my new diagnosis, all of that makes sense. Like, I didn't even graduate high school. All of it makes sense, right? And I'm going to film more videos on ADHD, but emotional regulation is a key factor in ADHD as well as impulsivity. I walked away from that desk, and I walked upstairs, and my heart is beating a thousand miles an hour, and I'm thinking, there's no way he's gonna pop 21. Like, there's no way, he's, he could get fired, he could get in trouble, there's no way he's gonna pop 21. And I said out loud, I said, pop 16. And I looked down at him and I see him like take a breath and he pops 21. And as I'm walking by, I hear it pop. And I thought, no way, no way he didn't. And I remember thinking, I'm about to beat this bitch up. I open the door to her cell, she's on her bed. I run in and I'm like full on fighting her as fast as I can. I smashed her in the face a couple of times. She's now on the ground. And this was like this whole big dramatic scene that felt like it lasted forever, but in reality, it was probably 45 seconds, a minute. And everyone thinks because they watch like UFC that fights last a really long time, they don't, they're fast. And one person usually gets the upper hand very quickly. And because I got in that cell really quick, I got the upper hand. So. I'm on the ground, I'm fighting her, and I'm thinking this is going on a lot longer than it is, and I'm like, you have to get out of this cell. So I run to the door, and I slam her door shut so she can't get out. Because if she gets out, and we fight out on the tier, or if I go downstairs and she's fighting me in the day room, we're both gonna get written up, we're both gonna go to the hole, and I wanna avoid that at all costs. I wanna get away with it. So she is like banging on the door, yelling that I just came in there and I walk away as calmly as I can. Like she got a couple hits in, so I am a little sore and my fist is like killing me, but I'm like, stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. I walk down the stairs and I'm like, no one look up there. And no one does. Everyone just completely ignores her. And the reason why I had to say that is because if everyone's like, oh, what's going on? I don't want the CO overlooking the pod to think that there's chaos or something going on. So I'm like, don't look at her. No one look up at that cell. And they didn't. Everyone acted like it didn't happen. So the next time she came out of her cell, she didn't say anything to the officer. And I got away with it. Because I was able to get away with that fight and because I was able to beat her up, a snitch that everyone hated, I got the respect that I wanted. People looked at me differently after that. They talked to me differently after that. And I liked the attention at the time. When I was 18, I didn't think that doing time was a big deal or that it was hard. I was always a short timer. And every time I would go in, not snitch, put in some work like that in jail or prison, people put more respect on my name and they took me more seriously. And in my lifestyle at the time, that meant everything to me. My reputation meant everything to me. So getting in fights and being impulsive and selling dope and guns, and I really thought that that was a lifestyle that I wanted to live. I look back on it now and see how fucking foolish I was. I look back on that person now and I hate that person. I don't understand how I lived that way for so long. And that these kinds of things were completely normal in my life. Using dope, selling dope, using in jail, beating people up. It was all such a normal aspect of my life. And I thought that that was gonna be my life forever. I didn't see a way out of my addiction. I didn't see a way out of continuously getting locked up. And in the end, when I was finally arrested at 23, at 4.30 in the morning, 80 pounds off of a meth binge, I really just hated myself and I thought that I had no soul. When I was arrested in Arkansas, it was like, oh, whatever, finally, like I get a break, I get a rest. I was so defeated and so helpless and so alone that like I didn't even care that I was gonna go to prison until I found out that I was also pregnant at that time. Of course, this is obviously years later in between the span of when I beat this, when I beat Barbara up and when I went to prison in Arkansas. But I, I really thought that my reputation mattered and I, I cared so much about what other people thought about me and to think like that now, like 
I don't give a single fuck what other people think about me now. And I am more confident at 32 than I ever was at 18. And if people don't like me now, whatever, I, I don't care. It just blows my mind that I felt like I had so much to prove that I was constantly putting myself in these situations just to prove that I was tough or strong or could handle it or just to get a little bit of respect from people that didn't ever have my best interest at heart. So I'd like to end this video with saying, don't give two fucks about what other people think about you. Don't care. That lifestyle leads to two places if you don't get out of it, prison and the ground. I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay in recovery. Don't beat people up just to prove a point and to try to get some freaking jailhouse respect. It's not worth it. And I will see you guys in my next one.